So today we're gonna to show you how to install a nine inch forward ring and pinion set in uh, the differential that is out of my 67 Camaro. So I've had this car for over 20 years and as a result of having that car, I've made great friends along the way. I think all car people can relate. There's always somebody that you have that helps you out with different things that you're working on. Today we're joined by my good friend, Rick Gilbert. Rick and I over the years have autocrossed a 96 E28 together with Akron Sports Car Club. Uh, put a few ring and pinions in a Z28. Uh, we put a ring and pinion in my car when I had a 12 bolt in it years ago. We've kind of been through this a few times. So it's always great having another set of eyes and another set of hands to help. So Rick, thanks for joining us today. We're gonna get in showing our customers how you install a nine inch forward ring and pinion. We're gonna show you how to set the pinion depth. We're gonna get into setting the backlash and then we're gonna run the pattern on it and make sure that everything lives a long and happy life. Now we're gonna talk about some of the tools that are gonna to be required to properly install your ring and pinion. Uh, Rick, we've got a whole bench full of tools here. Can you tell us about some of the ones over here? Yeah, sure, Al. Uh, so this tool right here is used to check pinion depth. This will uh, be used to check ring gear backlash. We'll have the digital torque wrenches for the various uh, nuts and bolts that we'll uh, be torquing down. We also have dial calipers here to measure the shim thickness uh, to adjust your pinion depth. So one of the other things I want to mention is in addition to a foot-pound torque wrench, you're also going to need an inch-pound torque wrench, and that'll help you set the pinion preload. A couple other tools that we just want to mention, this is a bearing splitter. This will let us split the bearings off of the differential case as well as take the bearing off of the pinion. So we're going to be using that here shortly. We also have a spanner wrench. That will help us um, adjust the side preload for the ring gear. So basically a four nine inch has two adjusters, one on each side of the, of the housing. You adjust them in and out and that moves the ring gear back and forth. So we're gonna be using that quite a bit, I'm sure. And uh, we'll be ready to go. One other thing I wanna mention that I, I do consider this a tool. Hopefully you consider this video a tool as well. This is a great book that Summit Racing sells. This has got a lot of good detail and information in it. Like I said, we're not gonna show you every step on how to take everything apart, but this book does. It's quite a good resource. If you've never done one before, it's a great idea to grab it, read up, study up a little bit, get familiar with everything before you dig into it. So now let's talk about the parts that we're gonna use when we put the ring and pinion assembly together today. Uh, the ring and pinion that uh, I purchased from Summit Racing is a Motive Gear Performance Gear Set. You may notice that it's got a pretty fine finish to it. This is actually an extra step that I had done to the gear set. This is called REM polishing, and REM polishing is basically a uh, acronym. I don't know exactly what it stands for, but basically the ring and pinion go into a big uh, deburring machine that's got little tiny stones in it, for lack of a better way to say it, along with a liquid. And those vibrate around the surface and end up polishing it. So two things that does for you, it will lower the operating temperature and also supposedly it'll make the gear set a little bit quieter. We're gonna find out because I've never done this personally, but we'll know uh, after we put the assembly back together how well it works. I also wanna mention we carry a number of ring and pinion brands. We have Summit Brand, Richmond, Yukon, Motive, G2. I could go on and on. Go to summitracing.com, check out what you need a ring and pinion for. We offer them from every good popular brand. Tons of great manufacturers that we carry. The installation kit's another component that you're gonna need today. This kit was provided, uh, I purchased it through Summit again. It's a Richmond kit. That's got all of the components that you're gonna need. It's got the bearings, the bolts, the shims, the gasket, sealant, gear marking compound. I also bought a little bit extra gear marking compound because we just wanna probably check this a couple of times. I always like to do these and check them multiple spots around the ring and pinion just to make sure nothing's funky. So we're gonna do that a few times, so I bought a little bit of extra for that. Today as we get into doing the work of putting the nine inch forward ring and pinion assembly into my differential, there's a couple of things that we wanna make you aware of. The first thing is, is that we're gonna take this apart, clean it out really, really well, press the new bearings on everything that needs to occur for us to be able to reassemble it. So rather than bore you with cleaning parts and taking everything apart, which is really pretty basic, it's easy to take things apart, right? We're gonna spend our time and focus on the reassembly process, checking all the dimensions and everything that you need. The first thing to note 
When we assembled this pinion cartridge, you have to use a spacer and shims in order to get the proper amount of pinion bearing preload. One of the things as you're doing this, as we were pushing everything together in the press, we had a spacer to push the bearing onto the pinion and then push the whole assembly together. And then we also had to push the pinion yoke in place and torque this bolt down to spec. Very important thing is that when you're checking the drag on this assembly, you've got to have this bolt torqued to spec. That will completely compress the shim pack. That will get everything uh, in the proper way that it will be when you assemble the rear end and make it completely final. Don't just kind of put this on there, think you've got it snug. You're going to torque this to the recommended um, torque reading in order to get everything completely put together properly. The second thing that we learned, which was one of these mistakes that it's a little embarrassing, but we're going to share it with you because hopefully it'll save you some time. We're pressing everything together. We're in the hydraulic press. We're putting shims in, taking shims out, checking everything to get the preload right. The spacer that we used had a closed end. As we're putting everything on the press and we're pressing the bearing in place, the spacer was bottoming out on the pinion, on the very top of the pinion gear. So guess what happens? You don't press the bearing at all. You think everything's pressed in place. You think you're completely locked down. You pull it apart. We still had a bunch of backlash on the pinion gear. So we took it apart, put another couple of shims in it. We changed the shim pack around, trying to think that we're making an adjustment. We put it back together, no change. What happened? Well, at that point, we should have been smart enough to think, well, something's wrong. If you change shims and that clearance doesn't change at all, then you should stop and say, what am I doing wrong? Thankfully, two of our coworkers, Bill and Jim, were in our other building where we have our press. They were checking everything out and they said, hey, uh, it looks like that spacer's bottoming out on the pinion. Five minutes later, we realized what we were doing, changed some of the shims around, everything started to go together much quicker. So that's one of the things we wanna mention. If you're ever moving shims around and nothing changes, ask yourself, I'm doing something wrong, something's not right. The second tip is, again, torque that pinion nut as you're assembling it. Get it as it's gonna be final assembled, then measure the rotational drag on the whole assembly and you'll be good to go. So now we are gonna go ahead and start assembling the differential into the case. We're gonna get everything put together and button this up. So the first step in installing our pinion cartridge assembly into the case is gonna to be to install the pinion support bearing. A couple tips that you'll wanna do as you're putting the pinion bearing, the pinion support bearing in place. You wanna use a driver. That driver's job is to push this bearing into place but it's gonna push it on the very outside of the race. You do not wanna use one that's too small and end up pushing on the center of the bearing. That will destroy the bearing, so you need to be careful about that. Once we get that driven into place, then we're gonna secure our uh, bearing to the case with a snap ring. You can also use this uh, star type of washer that gets driven in place and then it won't back out. Since our case already came equipped with a C-clip, we're gonna go ahead and use that again. So snap ring goes in, just like that. And drop it right in, and seats. So now that we have our pinion support bearing in place, we're gonna check our pinion depth. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use our old shim stack from the rear end assembly. We're gonna measure the thickness of it, and we're gonna use the new shims because they were included in the install kit. Get about the same thickness just as a starting point. We'll put it together, we'll measure the pinion depth, and then we'll change the shim pack to give us the appropriate depth per the manufacturer's instructions. So one other quick tip while you're measuring pinion depth is you do not want to install that O-ring just yet. You're gonna to wanna to check all your clearances, adjust your shim stack, and then the final step is gonna to be to put your O-ring on. Reason being, the more times you install that pinion cartridge with that O-ring, it's more of a chance to put a nick in it, to tear it, just one other way that could cause you a small problem or a leak at the end. Once we're totally set, then we'll put the O-ring on, then we'll do the final assembly. So once we have our pinion cartridge installed into our housing, torqued to spec, now we have to check the pinion depth. So as we said earlier, we started with a uh, set of shim stack that equaled what we took apart, and that'll be our starting point. 
What we have to find out is what is the depth or the measurement uh, of the actual tip, the very end of the pinion itself. One of the key measurements also is that we have to find out if the ring gear center line is in plane with the center line of the bore of the housing. So what I mean by that is when this is machined through this plane where your axles will slide into and where the ring gear is gonna run, sometimes this is machined completely on center as ours was, so we got lucky. Other times this may be machined one or two thousandths off. You have to make sure to check that before you measure from this face over to the tip of the pinion. So you gotta be very specific about that. In Motive Gear's instructions, they give you a really good illustration of what you're gonna to wanna to do as you pull shims in or out of the stack in order to move the pinion forward and backward. So in our case, what we did is we picked up from the surface of the bearing cap down to the bottom of the bore. We measured that, and in our case, that measured exactly what half of that bore diameter is. So that tells us that our center line is machined true to the housing. In some cases, if that measurement doesn't equal half, then that's gonna tell you that it's not exactly on center. You're gonna have to do a little bit of math and then subtract those couple thousandths of an inch out of your pinion depth measurement. So now what we're gonna do is actually measure the depth of the face of the pinion gear. And once you get this measurement, you're gonna write this down you're gonna compare this to what the manufacturer recommends the pinion depth be, and then you either have to add shims or subtract shims in order to get that pinion depth to match up exactly. And make sure that you account if your axle center line is offset one way or the other, because that will change that total stack up dimension height that you wanna get to. So now that we've done the math, we've determined we need to take about 30 thousandths of shim out of this assembly in order to get the pinion depth correct. So again, we're gonna dismantle everything, pull the pinion cartridge out, remove the shims, put it back together, check the pinion depth again. So as you take these off, you want to make sure the shims are clean, free of any burrs or any other material that could impact that pinion depth number. All right, so let's measure our total height, what we've got. We're at 0.0785. You said 44 and a half, Rick? Yes. Look yep. at that. There you go. That's good luck. That's our number. All right. So we are one inch, four, seven, one, one point four, seven, one. So one of the things we didn't mention in the beginning is that you want to make sure that you put the same caps back on the sides that you removed them from. An easy way to do this is take a punch, put a couple small dimples in each cap. Ours were marked two on the one side, one on the other. That way we had no chance of mixing them up. You wanna make sure to do that because you just don't want to induce any other variable. If you swap caps from side to side, who knows if there's gonna be some little bit of difference between them. So it's better to just make sure you put them back where they came from. So what we've done here is put our ring and pinion differential assembly into the housing. We've got the adjusters uh, preliminary threaded into place. We've got the backlash really roughed in right now. We're gonna tighten these caps down we're gonna to torque them to spec, we're gonna check everything, we're gonna run the pattern, make sure everything looks good. If it does, we'll pull these bolts out, we'll lock tight them, we'll put it all back together and we'll be good to go. So once you get everything set up to where you think you're pretty close, now it's time to apply the gear marking compound. Then we're gonna rotate the ring and pinion assembly while putting some drag on the ring gear and make sure that the pattern looks good. And we'll show you how to check that in just a moment.
So what you want to do once you have your gear marking compound applied is you want to put some drag on the ring gear and then you want to rotate it in both directions so that you can get a good pattern on the drive side and the coast side of the ring gear. You'll notice we've got the gear marking compound in a couple spots on the gear. It never hurts to check it in a couple spots. We picked uh, about every 120 degrees just to make sure nothing looks odd and nothing looks strange. So we're gonna run through each pattern and then we'll take a look at uh, how things appear when we're done. You can see that the pattern develops. This pattern really matches up nicely with what Motive Gear suggests which is having the drive side of the gear a little bit lower off the center line of the gear and a nice oval pattern. Each one of these really looks pretty good. We'll take a look at the coast side next. Now on the coast side of the gear, you can see the pattern looks a little bit wide, but it is somewhat down in the tooth, which is, again, what Motive Gear recommends. Overall, this looks pretty good, so we're gonna go ahead and run with it. So once we have our pattern set, we've got everything put together for the final assembly. We're gonna do one last check, and that's just to check the backlash to make sure we know where we're at before we put this in the car. The, the uh, Motive Gear uh, group recommends between seven and nine thousandths of backlash, and we are right in the middle of that at eight thousandths. So we, uh, we were fortunate it came out exactly right. So the very last step we have to do is just lock tight these little retainers in place. To install a ring and pinion, it takes a good amount of time, a little bit more than we thought. Plan on several hours to do this because you're going to be installing, removing, just constantly fitting and checking everything. So it will take you a bit of time. If you've never done it before, you can do it. We'll sell you all the tools that you need. Um, everything that you need to do this Summit Racing sells. You will need a shop press, you're going to need a caliper, and we'll give you a tool list at the end of this, uh, this video that will help you out. But it is, it is a fair amount of tools you're going to have to buy. Now, one of the things over the years that Rick, myself, some other car friends that we all hang out with do is we borrow tools from each other. You don't need to set up, unless you're a pro, you aren't doing 15 9-inch Ford ring and pinions every year. But some of the tools you need, you're going to use them every couple of years, so it's always good if you've got some friends to do this stuff with. Um, one of the other things I want to mention, if you don't want to install your own ring and pinion, we sell complete third member assemblies. It comes in a box just like you see here. You can pick your gear ratio, you can pick your carrier. We sell them from all the manufacturers that we carry that make some fantastic stuff that's already, it already comes pre-done in a box and you don't have to spend your time doing this then. You can just bolt the center section into your car and go. That may be a good option for some people. I'm kind of a curious person. Rick and I both said, let's get into it and see what it takes and, and we learned quite a bit. One tool I do want to mention that does get some special uh, attention, this Summit brand differential holder is fantastic. This thing made so, life so much easier because many years ago when I was younger, I had a Oldsmobile rear end, which the old style Oldsmobile rear ends had a center section like this. And I remember working on that, rolling it around my workbench. It was a nightmare. It was like wrestling an alligator. With this stand, as you saw in the video, it's awesome. You bolt the thing in place, you can flip it around, drive your bearings in, take stuff apart, put it together. It made life so much easier. So as I get older, I try to get a little bit smarter. I try to get some tools like this that make life easier, and this absolutely did. So that being said, I think we got to put this back in the car. Uh, we'll get some good weather, and then we'll go drive Old Red and see how it does. Looking forward to it.